What's up everybody? Welcome back in to another little YouTube video that I'm making on here. I was thinking about doing an episode of 1 and 0, but um I don't know. I felt like I didn't have enough stuff to talk about. I didn't feel like I'd talk for for long enough for for an episode worthy. So I was like, let's just throw this on the YouTube video. So there are a couple things that I want to talk about. Um mainly just the first being Marcus Freeman not signing with LSU. Um, it probably won't be too long of a conversation, but just wanted to, to touch on that just a little bit. And then also just, just talk about Taylor Heineke and, and what he just did uh, for the Washington football team. Obviously wasn't able to get the W, but I mean, I know it's 2021 and I was about to say that's about the most 2020 moment of all time and it's not even in 2020 anymore, but I mean, the, the craziness has not stopped. So it, it's basically saying the same thing. But anyway, so getting into Marcus Freeman. <sighs> what a tragedy, man. What what a tragedy. That's really all that I have to say. Um, well, I mean, it's not necessarily a tragedy because he's a Midwest guy. So it's not super surprising. What's a tragedy is the reporting on the event. So I saw the football scoop story, and then there were a bunch of other kind of fan accounts. It would be like me like knowing like someone who's kind of close to the program and then putting it out on my Twitter feed that it's going to happen. I don't, I honestly, I don't even know how, how those fan accounts um, and fan podcasts operate. Um, but there are a lot around LSU that were like confirming it too. But if you notice Bruce Feldman, Brett McMurphy, and then specifically the guys in Baton Rouge who usually have sources like Brooks Cubina, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering it, dude. Uh, Brody Miller, uh, Shea Dixon, Billy Embody. I mean, the whole like athletic 24-7 sports and then advocate staff, nothing from them. Silence. So, I mean, there was some some buzz news that 24-7, go 24-7, excuse me, reported on. But, I mean, there was never anything concrete from like real reporters. And while Football Scoop seems, you know, uh, reliable. Um, and maybe there was, you know, at a time, it maybe somebody said that they really felt like they were going to get him inside the LSU program and that they were close to a deal and that he felt like, you know, it was really attractive. That may have been true. They may have been close to a deal, but was it finalized? No, because two hours later, the Notre Dame football account announces that he's their defensive coordinator. So just as a note for fans, um, and you know, anybody in college athletics or, or even in the NFL or professional sports, um, whenever it comes to this type of stuff, you just got to remember that trust, trust the legit people. I mean, football scoop seems legit sometimes, but then they also put out that story, um, about Corey Raymond. And then two days later, there's a recruit like adding Corey Raymond as he commits to LSU. I mean, that still remains to me seen. I'm sure that Sark probably did call him. But it's just, once again, make sure that the people who always break stuff, the people who are reporting on the team every single day, those are the people that you should check out for news. So just a little bit more on the hire itself. Um, I'm sure that LSU offered him everything that they could and everything that was attractive and, and, and they probably gave him the house. Um, but ultimately he chose to go to Notre Dame. That was, I mean, for what it's worth, this doesn't mean too much, but whenever Marcus Freeman was coming out of high school before he committed to Ohio state, um, I believe that the fourth team on his list was Notre Dame, or it may have not been that exact number. I could be mistaken there, but point is he was offered by Notre Dame and he had some interest in going to that program. And he's a Midwest guy. So it's not too surprising him him going to Notre Dame. So we're we're down in the south. He's got six kids and and that was apparently a big part of it was that he he wanted to he didn't want to move his family that far. He kind of wanted to stay in the Midwest and ultimately went with Notre Dame. So really overall, it's not that surprising that he didn't go to LSU. Obviously, it was the big target, and it's LSU, so there's always a chance. Um, but it's not, once again, I've said this like three times, but it's not super surprising that that he didn't 
go to LSU and chose a, a team in the Midwest and a storied um, historical program like Notre Dame. That's somebody who can compete. You know, they're they're coming off a really good season. LSU's coming off five and five, and on top of that, there's still that Title IX investigation pending. So, a lot more stability, um, a lot more positivity around the program. And I mean, Jeremiah Owosu Karaboa, I think is how you say it. I might have butchered that second part of his last name. Um, but I mean, you just look at the defensive talent there. Obviously, there's defensive talent on LSU, but at the same time, they're just ranked last in the country in passing yards. Um, and their linebackers were really kind of subpar. And that's really his his position group, where Notre Dame has a lot of stud linebackers, including, I mean, first rounders going in the draft. So those are just a couple things that might have pulled Marcus Freeman. It seems like the Midwest thing, though, was number one. But really, I don't know for sure, because I'm not Marcus Freeman, and we're just reading all this stuff. And we saw that sometimes when you read things, they turn out to not be true. So that's my thoughts there on the Marcus Freeman situation. Then I just want to talk a little bit about Taylor Heineke. Um, obviously, we all thought the Bucs was were going to win this game. And when Alex Smith was announced that he would be inactive, everybody else just were like, okay, that all but confirms it that the Bucs will win this game. And I mean, that's how I felt. Obviously, I'm a Saints fan. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the Patriots. I'm not the biggest fan of Tom Brady, although in my mind, he is the greatest of all time, the GOAT. Um, so I was obviously going hard for the football team. I, I was just, it was kind of just a meme to me. I was like, let's go, seven and nine team. And then they made it close. The practice squad QB made it close. That's going to be a thumbnail, me, me just making that face. It was, it was insane. I mean, if you think about it, they're literally there. And this is, I don't mean this to be disrespectful. This is just a fact. Their head coach was literally a cancer patient at at one point in this season. They're playing their practice squad QB, and and the team literally doesn't have a name. So it, it was just crazy to see that they competed with them. I mean, Taylor Heineke won, I forget what award it was, but it was for like basically the best player in the FCS when he was at Old Dominion. Um I saw the Reddit college football account on Twitter was like, this dude's the goat. Um, <laughs> Brady's playing good though. And so that was pretty funny. Um, I saw one meme. I wish I could put it on here, but I just honestly, I don't want to take the time to edit it. I'm sorry if you're watching this video and you're just meeting me, but I keep it real. Um, but it's basically like the Greek gods where they're like, reaching out their hands and and it's just it's just Taylor Heineke diving for the end zone on the other side. So it was there, there's so many good memes. Um, all in all, today was just a phenomenal day of football. I'm going to be honest. I slept through that Colts Bills game and then I had to go to work near the end of it. But I saw that it came down to a Hail Mary. I saw that pass. What a game. Um, even though the Rams pulled away uh, on the Seahawks, still a close game and upset. What a game. What a job by them. Jared Goff coming in after John Wolford gets seriously hurt prayers to him he, he looked pretty roughed up and that picture did not look good that we saw of him uh in the ambulance so once again prayers to to Wolford but he comes in with a broken thumb throwing bombs wins a wins a playoff game um it's going to be very interesting um to see to see who my Saints end up having to face if they win tomorrow and that's not even a given and I genuinely mean that I wouldn't be surprised if Mitch Trubisky goes into New Orleans and wins and the past like three years or however long, I don't know. Saints in the first round don't work out very well, uh, even after a great regular season. So we'll have to see. But Taylor Hineke, man, I could go on and on, but y you guys probably all saw it. Just the way that he was able to be mobile, some of the throws that he was making, the way that he came into that game. And yes, I get they didn't have a game plan for him, but he's a smaller little dude. He was mobile. He was making throws, extending plays, running on the ground, but making sure that he would fall in time enough to where he wouldn't take a big hit or fumble. Got hurt at one point in the game. Goes to the locker room, comes back in, and throws like that that fade to to Sims Jr. or Sims Senior. I don't even know his name. Number fifteen, because um, I know there's another Sims eighty nine. In that back shoulder fade, just on the money after being hurt, took off his like shirt because you know it was just. It was such a blue-collar performance by Taylor Hineke, and he's not going to get a contract. I was talking to one of my friends about this, but he should. 
after that. I mean, he deserves to be somebody's at least third string cornerback, uh, or excuse me, quarterback uh, after that performance. So what a game by Taylor Hineke. Uh, it's going to be super fun to see what happens in tomorrow's games. I just pray that they're as good as the three that we saw today, and then we'll have the national championship. Anyways, that'll wrap up today's video. Thanks for checking it out if you are. Um, and just some other news. We'll have a national championship preview and an NFL wildcard weekend wrap up coming soon in the works. That should be up Sunday night, Monday morning type ish. Um, so we'll have to see. Anyways, thanks so much for checking out the video. Follow the Strive Network, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter at Jude McLaren. Follow Strive Network on Instagram at the Strive Network. You can also follow us on TikTok. We try to post some clips there. Not a big TikTok guy, but I know it's good for, for putting the videos out to people. So it's just at Strive Network on there too. Check us out on all our social media, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, that'll wrap up today's video. My name's Jude McLaren. I'll catch y'all later.